So in this video, we're going to discuss timing issues as it relates to high-level state machines. And if you haven't already, I would really encourage you to go back and take a look at the Zybook section uh, as, that relates to high-level state machine timing before watching this video. So the Zybook covers some information about timing. Specifically, it states that we won't actually see the value of our variables update until we are on the way to the next state. Um, so there's going to be a little bit of a delay. There's going to be a clock cycle delay for that update to actually begin to take place. And while that is all very true, one thing that the Zybook, Zybook does not discuss uh, is the difference between different types of state machines. So if you notice in the Zybook, they use more machines for everything, which means that the outputs, um, in this case, the outputs are what controls the data path, uh, are only dependent on what state they are in. But I think it's worthwhile to contrast that with the other type of finite state machine that we've seen, this Mealy type machine. So in a Mealy machine, the output is based on not just what state we're in, but also the inputs. That means that the output changes asynchronously. And using a Mealy machine can actually help mitigate some of these delays that we are seeing uh, in the Zybook examples that use more machines. Um, to help make that point clear, let me, let me show you an example using our pulse counter. So here is our pulse counter. It is a Mealy machine. The outputs are dependent on not just what state we are in, but also the inputs that are coming into the state machine. And in previous videos, we showed how to construct the data path, which is this part down here, as well as the state machine itself as a circuit. So just to refresh your memory, here is our data path. Our data path has two inputs, A and B. You can see that represented by load and negative 1 on our uh, high-level diagram here, as well as an output, Z, which is just stating whether count is equal to 0. OK? And then in the last video, we saw how to construct the state machine. So here is the circuit that we constructed in the previous video. We see it takes in inputs, DN. It also takes in an input from our data path that we see here, right, represented as Z. And the outputs of this state machine are not only the high-level state machine outputs, but also outputs that control the data path. So let's take a look then at this transition diagram that we saw before and see what the delay looks like in this particular case um, based on um, uh, this Mealy machine uh, instead of the more machines that the Zybook has been using. The place that it really matters is in this state down here. We can see that in this state, we are going to decide whether or not to update um, this, this uh, uh, counter variable based on the value of dn. So if dn is high, we're not going to do anything. If dn is low, then we are going to update this particular counter. So we are going to take care of this, this counter and, and subtract one from it. Um, so let's take a look then at a timing diagram and see how it compares to a more machine timing diagram. In this particular case, we see that the value of n is read in, as is uh, the uh, typical operation for this particular high-level state machine. So the first thing that we do is we read in this value of n, right? And while we're in the previous zero state, we wait for dn to go high. And so dn goes high at this particular point, which causes us to transition over to previous one. And then as soon as dn goes low, right, we would like to see this counter update. We would like to see this counter update as soon as dn goes low. That would be ideal, right? But we don't. We don't actually see it update right away. We have to wait for the next rising edge of the clock cycle, right? We see that B goes high as soon as DN goes low. That's an indication that we should load in a value. B is controlling the load register. So B going high means we are about to change the value of count. And we, in fact, see count subtracted by 1. So it's actually counting this pulse. So take a look at, at then the delay between the end of the pulse and when count is updated. We see that it's a whole half of a cycle. Actually, worst case scenario, it could be as much as three quarters of a cycle, or potentially even an entire cycle if it happens really close to the rising edge over here. So in that sense, right, the timing of a Mealy machine is about as bad as the uh, timing delays of the Bohr machines that you saw in the Zybook. Um, where the Mealy machine can make things a little bit easier for you is that you know, we have the ability to adapt to the inputs right away. So for example, if we saw um, DN uh, raise at any point between uh, this rising edge and this rising edge, we would be able to accommodate that, right? 
an update count right away without having to wait for the next clock cycle. Um, in a more machine, right, our outputs are based on uh, what state we are currently in. So depending on what state we are currently in, right, previous one here, right, we would actually have to wait until we transition back um, to a, another state, an additional state, before we could actually tell the register to load that value and subtract one. We, we would actually have a, a separate state in between that we would need to um, um, decrease this counter by one. Um, so really the difference between melee machines and more machines as it relates to delay um, is based on the fact that melee machines allow us to have fewer states, right? So that allows us to update our variables uh, a little bit quickly. There's still delay, right? We, we haven't eliminated that delay. In some cases, delay is just as bad as a more machine. Um, but we can adapt to these inputs right away, unlike a more machine, which always has to wait for this particular clock cycle in order um, for it to update anything in terms of outputs.